Hey kids, welcome to the Sideman Show. It's your host Bear. I have a very, very special guest today, and uh, it's it's going to be a fun show. Uh, we have Jeff Gullib in the house. Jeff, you there? I'm here. I'm ready to go. All right, man. So, what have you been doing? What's what's tell? Give us a skinny on what Jeff's doing. <laughs> okay, well, I have a new CD out. Everybody should buy this new CD. It's called The Three Kings. It's a tribute to BB Freddie and Albert King. Nice. And it's on E1 Records. And I just, I've, I've been wanting to do this record for as long as I've played guitar, I think. I'm just a, such a fan of all three of those guys. And I think they've been the most influential guitarists, like, ever. Whether you've heard it through them or through Eric Clapton or Stevie Ray Vaughan or some, you know, it doesn't yeah. need to come directly from them. But kind of every, all of the language we know on the guitar comes from B.B. Freddie or Albert. I think they... Wow. I mean, it's all it's all a progressive line, but they they they've contributed so much that I wanted to do a record. Dedicated who who to all them. played on the record with you? 
that's what I was just about to get to. Uh, that I played a gig last year with this band that was Josh Dion playing drums and singing, Andy Hess playing bass, who Andy's played with oh, yeah. Government Mule and Black Crows and So you had a bunch John of hacks Stokefield in the studio and with you. Henry right? Butler playing <laughs> piano and singing. So, so you had, had a bunch num- you had a bunch of hacks there with you, Jeff, is that what you're saying? What's that? You just had a bunch of hacks with you in the studio yeah, during this Yeah, I just had a bunch of hacks. <laughs> but as soon as I played with these guys, it sounded like a band, and oh, I didn't man. want to like. I didn't want to like change that chemistry. I didn't want to bring anybody else in. I've known. I, I mean, I know all the musicians in New York, but this this had a special feel to it. So I just as soon as I heard them play, I said, "I know these, these are the guys to yeah. interpret this music." Now, I've been a fan of yours for a long, long time, and I don't know if you'll remember this or not, but you and I have actually worked together. Oh, help me. That, that, that sounded familiar when I heard your name, but well, let's hear about this. up in Sun Valley, Idaho, I used to work with uh, Bruce okay, Willis. Yes. Okay, and, and <laughs> you used You used my boogie. Remember I had the little studio boogie amp yep. at, uh, at the Mint? That, yep. uh, uh, Bruce had a club called the Mint. Uh, he still does. It's up there in Sun Valley, and and you can. I was going to ask if he still has that club. He does, and and I don't know that it's it's open all the time. I think they open it up for events. But man, that night you played, you blew me away, brother. Oh man, thank you. You know, I've just been a huge fan for years. So this was really a treat for me to be able to get you on the show and and find out what you've been up to. Well, it's great to be here, and thanks for showing an interest. And also, thanks for letting me use your very cool amp. <laughs> no problem. Hey, it's a, it rubbed, some mojo must have rubbed off on it. It was a great little amp. <laughs> okay, cool. So uh, now, when you when you did this record, what was the was there? Did you like channel them, or I mean, how? What was your space that you were coming from to, to make well, this well, record? Well, the space that I was coming from was that we did a lot of songs that were originally recorded by DB Freddie or Albert, and I I wrote a few that were in the vein of D.B. and Freddie and yeah. Albert. And then Henry wrote a song called The Three Kings that's, uh, you know, just a tribute to those three guys. And I would channel them in the amount that I would sort of remember their influence. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm an, I'm going to play the way that I play no matter what. Right. And, I mean, I wish there was a there. There isn't any way to change. It. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that there isn't, but it's it's just what it is. Well, I'm going to definitely be playing some of your cuts on this show, and I can't wait to. You know, uh, my partner John and I both have been talking about you all week because it's like you know he loved your Billy Squire stuff. Oh, you know, I see Billy a fair amount because um, we we have a place. Well, we have a place in Manhattan, and also one. On Long Island, in the in the, ha- in the Hamptons, in the Hamptons, me, which is right down, the, <laughs> and both places are right down the street from Billy. That's cool. But I see him when I'm in the Hamptons quite a bit more, just because life isn't as hectic. Yeah, he's a great yeah. guy too. Yeah, yeah, he he sang a song on my last CD, on the Blues for You CD. That's cool. So, are you touring a lot? Yes, yes, I'm touring. I mean. Pretty much every week I'm going somewhere. I just got back from Kansas City, and I'm heading to Reading, Pennsylvania tomorrow morning, and then um, Texas a couple days after that. Wow. There, is, there is a lot of uh, a lot of dates supporting this record. Well, I bet Texas is a, is a no-brainer. That's you know down there where Chris Duarte and all those cats are. And- yeah, there there are some. Yeah, see, every time I play. Austin, I'm, I'm humbled that I'm that I'm there. There's so many great guitar players there. Oh man, <laughs> they're everywhere. Yeah. Uh, we went to a Steve Miller concert last night, and Steve was in rare form. It was it was fantastic. Yeah, he's a great guitar player. For you know, and he loves he pays homage you know big time to BB and Freddie and every. I mean, that's his See, that's his knows, genre. He, he knows he knows the righteous stuff. Yep, he does. So, well, let's talk about, uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, some history here. Okay. Because uh, obviously, I mean, you played with Billy Squire, but you also played with uh, Rod Stewart. Yes, for many years I was uh, Rod's guitar player. Well, from I was there all the time from 88 to 95. Then I left to start the band Avenue Blue and to start a 
a solo career as opposed to a sideman career. Yeah. But then I went back with um, with Rod in '93 when he uh, I'm sorry 2003 when he when he was start, was doing the standards records. Yes. Like he was he well he was originally looking to do a run of TV shows and he was trying to find somebody who really loved standards. But all the TV shows wanted him to play Maggie Mayer, one of his hits, <laughs> yeah. who, who also loved rock music. And, and I really do love both. You know, it's not, I mean, I love, I, I always put this, there's two kinds of music, that that's from the heart and that's, that's not. Yeah. And that's really it. Other than that, it's all, it's all great music. Well, I, mean, I don't think there's anything you couldn't play. I heard oh, you play, you. and there's, you covered everything the night that, that uh, you played there. And that's been a while back, but... I mean, my God, you covered everything. It was amazing to watch one guitar player be able to play fluently in so many styles. Yeah, that's very nice of you. Well, it's Thank the truth, you. Jeff. I mean, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to blow smoke up your skirt. It, it was an amazing night. So, uh, I, that, I do appreciate that. It's very nice of you to say. Uh, I, I just love playing guitar. I'm, I'm just amazed every time I get to do this for a living. I hear you. It is cool, isn't it? We're back here on the show with Jeff. Jeff, tell me about this song, Freddie's Midnight Dream. Well, I mean, I was always a fan. I mean, I'm obviously a fan of Freddie King's, but this song in particular, when when it came out in, in the '60s, there was there was very sophisticated chord changes, and I was drawn to that, being that I, you know, that I like jazz mm-hmm. and all all styles of music. I was just drawn to the composition of the song. But it's also it's a nice nice way for me to just kind of play something slow and melodic. I think that was a a very influential track of Freddie's. Very cool. So now you've got uh, tell me about some of the other guests that were on the the record with you. Well, um, Robin Ford played guitar on a, a song, which I'm I'm a big fan of Robin. Yeah, me too. So I tend to do that, and Sonny Landreth played slide guitar on another track i'm a big fan of sonny's well sonny is as good as it gets man i mean yeah. it just doesn't get any better than sonny landra and uh we're gonna have sonny on the show too I, i've got to get time set up with him to get him on here he he is fun to hang and talk with man he's just he's a he's a hoot he's for real cagey. well tell him i said hello and thank you i will jeff because he, he's, right. he's one of those guys man that just you know if he had a billion dollars you'd never know it yeah He's just down to earth and salt of the earth, good people, man. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was thinking about the um, Curb Your Enthusiasm, the, sh- the show with yeah, um, Larry David, Seinfeld's partner, Larry David, who now has I don't know what half a billion dollars. He has a lot of <laughs> yeah. money. He has almost as much money as Seinfeld. <laughs> but Jerry said that it was that he's proof that having lots of money doesn't change your personality. <laughs> he was always neurotic, and he still is. That's hilarious. I love that show. Yeah. 
He gets into the more crap, man. I mean, <laughs> you know, and it really, life is like that in a lot of ways for some people, I guess, you know. I, yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I try to avoid it. Yeah. So what, what kind of gear are you playing on these days? What are you, what's your Well, I'm axes? using a Fuchs amplifier, mm-hmm. which, which has been great. I I got, which CD did I get that from? Um, see, no, it was the... Um, the Grand Central CD, they sent me one just before I went in the studio. I've been using the same Fender Vibra King for yeah. as long as I can remember. I mean, I love love that amp for recording, but I, I took this head with me, this uh, Fuchs head into the studio thinking, eh, I'll give it a try. And I was able to get just what I need out of it. You know, wow. the, uh, there's a mid-range crunch that I, that, I, that I like that isn't quite distorted, but sustains and... And I could find it on that amp pretty easy. How about uh, I, uh, how about pedals? Are you using any pedals these days? I use a uh, full tone OCD pedal, um, which pedal. I I find is great. This is the first time I've given up my rat pedal, like for more than a more than a month. <laughs> I've tried every other pedal, and it's always I've always gone back to the rat. But the OCD, it I, what I like about it is it responds to like my. Because I like to just turn something on and leave it on. I don't yeah. like to be like messing with foot switches a lot. And it responds to how hard I hit the guitar or how loud I have the guitar turned up. Like it'll clean up if I turn down and it'll distort when I turn up, which is great, you know, which is the way a good, yeah. a good tube amp will do. Well, and, then, and that was good, I, I'm sure. I, so I only I use that. I use a Dynacomp sometimes to record with a... An, uh, an MXR Dynacomp. Oh yeah, they get nice right. and squashy, man. You can you can get those things to. Yeah, I mean, I I rarely I rarely use it live, but I use it to record with sometimes. Is it one of the original ones, the old school yes, ones? It's yeah, it's an old script logo with yep. with no battery eliminator. I just always have to make sure that the batteries are fresh, and it's uh, I, I use that, and then I I had three guitars that I recorded this last three this last CD with. Um, a 1959 345. Wow. Yes, which is the righteous. I bought that when it was less than $1,000, so I've had that for a while. And a 69 Les Paul, it was a, it's a special. It had the small mini humbuckers. Oh, yeah. Somebody had switched them out for the big humbuckers, which is what I wanted to do, but I wanted somebody else to do it. I didn't want to bastardize it myself, so <laughs> I was glad that I found one that had been already done. Yeah, that that had already been done too, and and then I have a, a '65 Strat that I've played oh, for beauty. most of my life. Yeah, is that the red and, one? Yeah, it's the red Strat. Yeah, I remember that guitar. And so I have a I have a Seymour Duncan full shred um, humbucker in the bridge but i didn't have to do any routing to put that in so seymour I makes still incredible have the stuff. original pickup i could put back in there but i just find that if i have if i have a sound set up for the neck position yeah when i go to the treble position it's too trebly so it's fine to have a humbucker in there that's that you know i can do the same setting wow that, that guitar is amazing I, I remember you playing that at that show and yes i've just, had that one for mm. i've had it since it was cheap <laughs> I know what you mean, man. You know the the hyperinflated prices there for a while during you know like two thousand two through two thousand eight. Yeah, man, it was insane. Yeah, it's still insane, but not as insane. Yeah, because just because people don't have the money to spend, but it's it's still more than I would want to pay for any of this stuff. But I know people who sold their their Sunburst Les Pauls. You know, when the price got to like three thousand dollars, yeah. You know, little, little they know that the price would go to you know closer to two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, I know. You know, <laughs> I never owned one, so I didn't have the problem with that. <laughs> yeah. So you don't have to kick yourself in the ass now, years later, going what? Are... Yeah, so I, I just wish I would have bought one for three thousand I mean, dollars. Yeah, me too. I know I had ample. You know, I can't tell you how many guitars I've owned over the years, but I had ample chances to buy. 59 you know back in the 70s they were kind of everywhere and you know was, uh, you know they were they weren't expensive at all and yes I, I know when i got my first guitar which would have been 1960 well it wasn't my my first guitar but in 1968 i got my first les paul yeah and they started reissuing les pauls 
and I bought a a blacklist ball for five hundred dollars, oh, brand new, and they I could have bought one from a fifty six at the same time for the same price. Oh. I'm like, well, why do I want to buy an old guitar? I can get a brand new <laughs> one for that price. I know. Do you remember, like, you know, the, I, I had this talk the other day. I can't remember who I was talking to, but we were talking about Fender Bassman heads. And that's what yeah. I played through when I was a kid coming up. And I kept thinking, well, someday they'll come up with something way better than this. And, I, you know, I just got to keep waiting for that day. And now everybody's using those. You know, I do sessions here in Nashville a lot. And I see them everywhere I go, those little Bassman 50s and 70s. Yeah. yeah. But the thing about the, the old amps is you have to find one that's in good shape. Yeah. Because sometimes they're just too, you know, electronics do wear out. Oh, pretty woman, she's a rising sun, says all your cheap paint and powder ain't gonna help you none. She's a pretty woman right down. To the bone, so you just might as well leave your skin alone. Pretty warm, what's the matter with you? Can't make you love me, no matter what I do. <laughs> is kind of in a weird transition right now. 
Yeah, I I may be naive, but I'm thinking that if somebody does something from the heart that they believe in, that they're going to keep doing, that there will be work. But I th- I am seeing that it's um it's definitely changed. What's your take on the music business right now? Where do you think it's uh, where do you think it's heading? Uh, well, I think that it's going to be my kids who figure out how, how profit's <laughs> going to be made out of this. Not, exactly. Not, not me. Yeah, me either. You know, it's going to be somebody a lot <laughs> a lot younger, a lot more in touch with what the world is today. I I don't know. I you know with record sales kind of across the board being down down ninety percent. Yeah. You know, and it, it makes it, it it makes it difficult. There's going to have to be a new a new business modem. One one that I don't understand. It's gonna be my ten year old son's gonna to have to come up with the answer. I love that answer because it's really kinda of true. I don't see it fixing itself anytime soon. There you know, down here all the labels are just scrambled and they're closing their doors like every day there's another label gone, you know. They just can't Yeah, stay I don't in think with um what we know, I don't think there's going to be a way to really, like, police the stuff and, like, continue to have, like, the, the business that we grew up with. I don't think that's going to exist. Yeah. One thing that I don't think forced packaging is going to happen, you know, where you get a budget to do 10 songs and then they sell an album and, you know, it seems like people are buying more and more tracks. Yeah, True. I've seen that too, and, and you know, there's a, the the other thing is with the internet is now you know the kids have this instant mentality of everything is you know instant. Like when you and I were kids, we used to wait for Tuesday to go to the record store and see what was new. You know. Yes, yes, and you know? it was uh, definitely there's a a different attitude now that the music should be free, and it does cost money to to make the music and produce it and. You know, that, that'll that have to change if people are going to keep doing it. I'm not sure how that's going to happen, but it's going to have to change. Well, you know, there used to be patrons for the arts. And yes. there is no more. Uh, if anybody <laughs> wants to be a patron of the arts, I'm I've, I'm very artistic. I'm here waiting. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. He's yes. looking for a patron got, of the arts, like we all are. <laughs> yes, I've, I've got two sons in private school. <laughs> 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 I love it. There, you know, there. It, it used to be that way, though. You know, even the labels back in the day. I'm sure you remember this because you came up, you know, same time I did through the business. There used to be artist development, and they don't even they don't have anything like that anymore. Yeah, no, that's that's that that is that is gone. It's kind of like go for it as is hit it and quit it. Yeah, see what sticks, and if it sticks, <laughs> copy it ten times over. Yeah. 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 So you definitely have to get the first one, the the original of anything, if you're going to get anything. Well, I was going to ask you how much radio airplay are you getting with this? I don't know, to be honest. Yeah. I, I haven't any idea. I know that that they weren't concerned about jazz radio. They were more concerned about blues. Well, luckily, E1 Records likes me as a blues artist. Yeah. So it's you know it's. Uh, which say whatever category they want to put any of it in is fine with me. I just like I just like music. I don't know how anybody can put you in a box. That's what perplexes me. I, you know, I was trying to think. Okay, what genre would you kind of fall under? And really, there isn't there isn't anything you haven't done or played. And so it's kind of you know you to me represent what the ultimate side man really is. Even though I know you're an artist. You're also so well rounded, and you play everything. I mean, I don't well, know how I worked as a side man for so many years. I think that that's, I think that does pay off for an artist to know what it's like on the other sure. side. Also, yeah, man. I mean, you know, we've all. You know, I don't know when I was coming up. Uh, you know, I slept on pool tables in some of the clubs I played in because they didn't have rooms for us. And, you know, we've yeah. all done the you're riding the station wagon all over the country. You know, hauling a trailer and stupid, crazy things like that. Uh, now, when you're when you're looking back on your career, what's what's one of the uh, defining moments where you went, "Wow, doesn't get any better than this"? I'd say getting a job with Rod Stewart. Yeah, that's huge. Was, yeah, I mean, I was such a fan. You know, of I mean, I bought his I bought, well, I bought the Jeff Beck Truth record when it came out. I was yep. a fan of Jeff Beck's from from the Yardbirds, and then I heard this voice and was like, "Wow!" So that was. 
I was very impressed that that he you know was uh that he liked me enough to hire me i really enjoyed it oh yeah the, i enjoyed the time that i that i worked with him and i would i i took away a lot and you know i don't have anything but good good things to say about that um that era of my life now you were actually you were on the dvd with him too from royal albert hall yes that was um that was after i went back and 2003 I did a run of TV shows with him and then he was going on tour and his guitarist Paul Warren was supposed to come back and do do a tour for a year and then he couldn't there was some contractual problems that Paul had in Italy with an artist okay like he didn't think anybody could could really um, enforce the contract with musicians but I guess they can if they've if they're inventive enough I said if you want to go back to the states you can do you want to take those fingers with you how about those <laughs> <laughs> you know, so he was uh, he, he didn't go back and they... <laughs> I, I I was able to fill in for the first leg of the tour the first three months no pun intended do... ladies and gentlemen the first leg of the tour <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, <Jeff. laughs> and then when, when he went to do the live at Royal Albert Hall DVD yeah he, he hadn't really been happy with any guitarists that came in between when I played and the filming of that DVD. So that was that was cool that that worked wow. out that I was able to do that also. But I, I'm very proud of that DVD. I, if anybody's uh, well, we're going to put all this up. I'm, I'm going to put all the the you know where they can get all these things up on this interview. And uh, yeah, and uh, by the way, at JeffGolub.com, they there I do put a page up with with whatever gear I used on a cool. record, the guitars and amps and pedals and, you know, track by track. So it will be up there if anybody wants to go by and, you know, if you're surfing the net. Well, you know, one of the things that we try to do with the show, the show's been all about education, too, because I really try to help uh, help all these people that are coming up because, you know, so many of them, and I'm sure you get it all the time, too. They go, you know, how do I get in? How do I, how do I knock down this, this wall? Yep. And uh, what I always try to impart to them is, be true to yourself. Be who you are. Don't try to don't try to play flavor of the day because that never works. You know, just just be who you are and, and let your art be enough. You know. Yep, that's all excellent advice. It's it's, it's tough, a, and and I do agree. It's uh, yes, f- formats and and the flavor of the day that comes and goes, but. You know, if you're doing something that you're honest about, that that will always be there, and you'll always have that. That's true. And on that note, we're going to take another quick break, and then we'll be right back with Jeff. So hang Thank tight, you. kids. Okay, let me stop for a minute here, Jeff. Have you ever loved a woman so much that you tremble in pain? Trembling pain All the time you know She bears another man's name But you just love that woman So much as it's a shame and a sin
you know you can't leave her alone That is the incredible Jeff Gola playing right there. And we're going to be back tomorrow with part two of this interview. So make sure you tune back in tomorrow. Check out Jeff. It's going to be a good time. That's going to do it for this edition of The Sideman. We'll see you tomorrow.